You're listening to 10 Points, a podcast with your hosts, Ash and Nicholas, where all the talk is Canadian Highlander, our favorite format from the best trading card game ever, Magic the Gathering. Hey everyone, it's me, Ash. And me, Nicholas. Today we're going to be going through four and a half mini topics to talk about, so uh, before we get into that... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best card from... Uh, or best card from this set is judgment uh it was slim pickings real real slim pickings i think there were like five things that i can in the most generous sense call candidates and that that is very generous uh yeah mine is a it's just the one that sees the most play which is mental note um it is Thought Scour, but you can't target your opponent, so it's strictly worse Thought Scour nine times out of ten. It's mental note, basically. You mill yourself, you draw a card, you fuel your graveyard, good stuff. I appreciate that you just said it's mental note, basically. No, no, it, it is Oh, mental no, note. sorry, I mean, it, it's Thought Scour, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the card's decent, sees play in some decks, doesn't seem play in others. If you it's don't a... know what it does, Nick, will you tell them? <laughs> What, Mental Note? Yeah, who knows? They might not know. Oh, it mills two cards and then draws a card for one blue at instant speed. That's it. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, decent, but not not the best. Uh, my best card from is significantly worse. Uh, I picked Cabal Therapy. There, there were a few other options that maybe see more play than this. This really only sees play in, like, Aristocrats and maybe, like some sandy b lists or something but i picked it because it's got the most high roll potential like the way you play this card is you cast it naming just a random card that might be in their deck purely for the information of what's in their hand and then you flash it back to actually take something but every once in a while the the stars align and you just no scope a card in their hand and just absolutely ruin their day on the first go and I, I want to clarify something about Cabal Therapy. If you don't know what it does, you name a card and then they reveal their hand. And if you they have the card, they discard it. Um, the thing is, what good players would tell you to do is to, when you cast it blind, think of the worst thing they could have against you that they would probably keep, and then guess that. But what I say is to just think of the card that would tilt them the most if you took it. See, and I just I just let the soul read flow through me. I just I sense what cards are in their hand and I name that. I mean that's also better. <laughs> well, uh, Nicholas, how about we how about we get going with our main topic here? Would you like to introduce the first well, the, our our mini topics. Would you like to introduce yeah. the first mini topic? Yeah, basically we had four topics that wouldn't make full episodes but we wanted to talk about them so we're doing four tiny little episodes in one episode uh but they kind of flow together pretty well so the first one that we're going to be talking about is pet cards uh pretty simple just pet cards that we have that we put in decks when we definitely shouldn't uh ash you want to start us off yeah um speaking of casting a card strictly for getting information on what is in your opponent's hand one of the my favorite cards is peak it is one blue mana for an instant look at target player's hand draw a card i've actually seen a bit of debate on this card i think it's legit good oh yeah Uh, i I was gonna say i don't don't know if that qualifies as a pet card i think that's just objectively good i've heard uh, several people including people that are like Jess guy stands like dumpster on this card. So I, I I think it's legit good. I think a lot of people think it's legit good, but that's why it's the first listed pet card because it might be real. Sure. And also, so, pet cards aren't necessarily bad cards. Those are actually coming later. But so pet, it's just like I personally really like it and play it even when I maybe don't necessarily need to. Uh. See, you took pet cards as cards that are not necessarily bad, but you just play them in maybe suboptimal positions. I just pick cards that are actively bad, but uh, I play them anyway because I love them. Uh, and you started with a card that's that might be uh, fairly playable and goes in a decent number of decks. I picked foil. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, some people, I, I would imagine longtime listeners have probably heard me sing the praises of Foil before. It's like Force of Will if you wanted to three for one yourself and also had really strict stipulations. Uh, it's it's four mana for a counterspell, but you can play it for free if you discard an island and another card. Uh, the card's bad. Don't get me wrong. Notably, does not say another blue card. Exactly. So it's great in Reanimator, like no, top it is, tier best card in the deck. It is not. Uh, it is not. Take it out of the sleeve and light it on fire right now. In exactly Reanimator. Uh, but even I, I've I've put foils certainly in more decks than I should. Uh, and the the thing is, I have absolutely blown my opponent out with foil before. Not very often, but there is there are at least two specific scenarios I can remember in which my opponent was certain there was no way I could have any interaction. Like the force, uh, like this was before force of negation, so like force of will was gone. Days didn't do enough. My opponent was like, "Okay, I, I'm certain there's there's just nothing to be done here." And then I hit him with the foil, uh, and so like you gotta put it in your deck when it does that stuff for you. So my next card, my next card is Forbidden Alchemy, which is kind of like Foil, but in it's that it's, a bl- it's better than Foil. <laughs> it's not actually good, but I love this card. It is two and a blue for an instant. You look, at, you, you look at the top four, take one, bin the rest into your graveyard, and then it flashes back for black and four, I think. Maybe it's black and five. I think it's black and four. I think it's black. I think it's five total. Yeah, yeah, because Mystical Teachings is the one that's uh, black and five. Anyway, I-, I love this card. I don't think it's actually good, but I just absolutely adore it. And I have played it in decks that are otherwise competitive. I imagine you're going to talk as long about the next card as you did about Foil, and there's not really much to say about this aside from it's really fun and like Reanimator. So I'm going to let you go. This card I'll talk less about. This one is, is a bit more of a real card. It's Zeator's Envoy. Um... And I still play it every time I play Jun Midrange. Uh, it's a somewhat newer. <laughs> yeah, card every time you play Jun Midrange. Which it it's been a little while, but I, I still I still throw Jun together every once in a while just to keep the Jun light burning. Um, the card's not amazing, but I once uh, blitzed it and then hit um, the three man on Nixilis that casualties a creature, uh, and that just like felt too good. And so now I gotta I gotta put it in the deck when I play the deck. I must say, I do have one sleeved up in the box next to me, <laughs> so I, I I think that card's interesting for sure. It's a cool um, card. My next card is definitely a card that can be legit if your deck can cast it, depending on the deck you're playing. Um, it is Esper Charm. It's blue, black, and white for an instant. Choose one. Destroy target enchantment. Target player draws two or target player discards two. Actually, it might just say you draw two or target player discards two. Either way, you can mind rot them on their upkeep, and that's fun. Or on their draw step. After yeah, I was draw. about to say, we're on their draw step. Um, it is not... Like, it's not bad. It's just that, like, it usually doesn't make the cut over other three drops because three drops are a tough slot, you know? Yeah. Um but it's definitely fine. Um, I've played it in like the blue white decks that just splash black for like five cards, and I've also played it in like Esper Control. But uh, I like the card; it's fun. It, it, it's an old favorite of mine from back before I knew what Highlander was, and it also was in my very first Highlander deck. So I definitely have some some ties to this one. Yeah, uh, my my next and last pet card is uh outpost siege oh I think yeah people have probably heard me talk about this one as well uh i don't know why i love this card so much back when we first started playing can lander can lander as a whole and even more specifically our meta was just like extremely grindy or at least a lot more grindy than it is now and so uh, like the card was great and now like i don't know i've just got like a sentimental attachment to it and uh still Still throw it in a deck every once in a while, though it is certainly not good. 
I do kind of miss those days. Me too. Maybe we, maybe we should put together some kind of like ten points event where it's like <laughs> everyone like your round gets to be like seventy minutes, but everyone needs to play a grindy or like at least not a hyper fast deck. That 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 okay. Let's let's table that for now. Yeah, we'll table that for now. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe coming to let an it, event near. You. Let us know in the comments if you would play in a webcam event where everyone had to play decks that their main game plan doesn't win before turn seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, my I have two more cards on the pet card list. Um, first one is Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Gonti Lord of Luxury is an old friend of mine from Canlander. He was also in my... He, I don't think he was in my very first Canlander deck, but he was in, like, the 125-card pile that I compiled to build that deck out of. Um, at the time, no one, nobody in our meta owned a Caracas. Um, and even if they did, it wouldn't matter, because yeah, he like, has an ETB. Gonti is one of the better ones to have Caracas. Well, yeah, but I'm getting to that, which is that, turns out, like, if he's getting Caracas, and you don't have a ton of mana, he kind of does nothing. Just because, like, you don't want to keep playing him every turn not knowing what he's going to hit. Yeah. Um, but, I like it. I've played it um, in some of, like, the early, the very, very early versions of my Four Color Nightmare Saw deck, like, before it was red, when it was just, like, Abzan... ETB and Undying Evil stuff. Um, he he saw play there, and that was a that was a good time. I think I might have played him in one of the four color versions. Maybe I should just do it again for fun. That actually sounds lovely. But Gonti Lord of Luxury, love that one. That's a fun one. They are cool. Uh, and then my last pet card, and Nick, you can tell me if you think this is legit good or not. But you know that I've been casting this card since like 2015 or something. It is Azorius Charm. My love. Uh, no, that, that definitely falls into the pet card category. Okay, alright, great. Um, I was just going through my singleton box of uh, staples that are all sleeved, that are all singleton, and I found two of them. So, <laughs> sure. if that illustrates how much I like Azorius Charm. I was actually telling someone the other day about when you Azorius Charmed someone's bird to, bird to paradise because they attacked just for, to send a message. And you were like, well... Oh, yeah. To, <laughs> to finish that story, I guess, uh, I was playing in Modern. I was playing Blue-White Tempo. So it was actually more legit. A little bit. Uh, and I was against Kiki Pod. Or uh, it was Kiki Cord. Pod was big. Yeah. It was Kiki Cord. And um, he goes turn one... I go land. He goes turn one birds. I'm like, cool. I go land. He goes, all right, land. Like, I think he played a... Uh, like a, I don't know, Lotus Cobra or something. No, if he had a land, he wouldn't have done that. He played an irrelevant two drop and then attacked for zero to send a message. And I was like, well, I hate to do this to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then he literally just looked down. I deserve that. Yep, it's brutal. It was great. <laughs> I think I ended up losing that. I won that game, I think, but I lost the other two, I think. But I, I could be totally wrong. Who knows? Um,. But yeah, that's uh, that's pet cards for me. Uh, I'm sure I have actually for everything on this entire mini episode. Episode, I feel like there's other cards that I'm not remembering, but uh, especially the cards I wish were playable. But we'll come around to that. Yeah. All right. Are we good to move on to the next uh, category. I am. All right. The next one is cards that we miss. Uh, for for anyone that uh, has listened to our 2022 year end wrap up. Uh, you will remember that we did this previously. Uh, so we tried to not pick cards that we mentioned in that episode. I think but, I might have one or two. Uh, I, th- I think I I think I managed to dodge. Well, I might have one, to be honest. I might have one. Okay. Um, and one more disclaimer before you continue on this is um, these are cards that we used to love playing in Canlander and now finds to be no longer good in Canlander, but we wish we could still play them and they'd be legit. And you know, some of them might be, maybe not, maybe so. This is just from our perspectives where we sit and I have at least more context for one in particular of these. Anyway, you can uh, start. 
All right, I'll start us off. Uh, Veraska the Unseen is my first card. Uh, I used to love this card. I thought it was great. It slices, it dices, it protects itself, it removes things. Uh, but now it just costs too much mana. In the world of two and three and four mana planeswalkers, you you can't justify putting Veraska in a deck. Like, maybe the rock, but even the, the what rock, now? I mean, Green, green, black, rock. No, I, I know. Just no one plays that deck anymore. Oh yeah, no, the deck, the deck doesn't exist. Uh, and part of that's because it plays cards like Veraska. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I will say, do you remember that time you got me with the uh, with the assassin? Yeah, it was it was great. Like <laughs> it only happened once, but it did happen. You just you just keep ticking Veraska up, and they don't want to attack it, and then all of a sudden you got uh, death friends. I will say. One time you ulted it and killed me with it. Another time you ulted it and I used three spot removal spells. Um, or was that not you? Well, I don't know. I, I'm if I'm not mistaken, Vraska's it, it it turns all of your creatures into. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. All right, hold on. There there is also one. Uh, no, this this is the one. You're right. This is the one that makes the three one ones. There's another one that turns all of your friends into assassins. Yeah, that's the Golgari Queen that I also think is not that good, but people play that one, so I don't know. Yeah, Vraska the Unseen makes three one one assassins. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, oh, I don't hold think on. Go, I don't think Golgari Queen's good either, but Vraska the Unseen's older. Like, I don't know if the Go, like Vraska the Golgari Queen was ever like really great. It was just like pretty fine in some decks. Hold on, this is important. This is important. There's a ruling that says... That, I guess they had to say this. It says, Each assassin token's triggered ability will trigger whenever it deals combat damage to any player, including you. Huh. Huh. So anyways, uh, my card... My top card that I miss... Well, not... These are in no particular order. Um, is Lingering Souls. I know that people play this card, but for the last while, the only car, The only decks that I remember seeing it in are Dredge... As part of a reanimate my hermit druid with anger in the graveyard line, and Jeskai tokens, I'm sorry, Mardu tokens. Jeskai tokens might play it, and Mar- Mardu tokens probably plays it. I- I'm assuming it's there. I actually play. We have someone who's been playing in our local locals recently, and I just don't remember seeing it. It's probably there, but I don't recall seeing it. Surely it is. I mean, it's got it. Souls. It's definitely fallen from where it used to be, but it's definitely still playable enough to go in a tokens deck yeah it's gotta be but like I, I feel like that used to just be like a mid-range card yeah and now i just like i played it in my esper i call it esper control as my first deck it was really more mid-rangey but controlling mid-rangey uh i played i played it there but that being said i was against a lot of people who one one blockers were just randomly good against so you know it's just that lingering souls is great yeah, I, I just don't think it's quite there anymore, broadly speaking. Yeah. Uh, my next card is uh, Expansion Explosion, oh. which, to be fair, was probably never, like, amazing, but I remember I used to, no, like, no, was, love it playing it in Blue Moon. Uh, like, there was just something great about Bib playing a big Expansion Explosion in Blue Moon, or, I guess, specifically the Explosion side, but, like, also... Expansion was pretty solid too. You could do like a like a lot of shenanigans, but now it just it doesn't do enough. Yeah, I, I think Blue Moon was the primary home it had, and if and I that ever deck put Blue... doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, either. I mean it's been floating around a little more than it used to. We had someone in our local last week playing it actually. Huh. Um, That's cool. If it makes a resurgence in my uh, in my hands, um, I will likely include Expansion Explosion. I also quite like that card, um, but I agree that it's not what it used to be. Um, it was not. It was really good for a while. Wait, it can copy your opponent's stuff, right? Uh, I don't know. You didn't even pull it up. This is ridiculous. All right. Assuming I'm remembering right, and it can, I might be thinking of Narset's reversal. But when like we had a lot of recalls floating around one time, like one like little season of our meta, and I feel like it was really good then. Because, like, you could copy your recall or their recall, and you were just having a great time. Yep. Thankfully, the re- recall's now eight points, so 
the degenerates like Ash have Not to... thankful. Not thankful. <laughs> All right, my next card is War Leader's Helix. It's uh, if you double the price of of Lightning Helix, you get one more damage and, and one, one more, more life. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this card actually used to be like played in Jeskai. Um, if you don't know, uh, back in the day when we did not have enough good removal for things with four toughness, you would play this, <laughs> and it was like, eventually, it just goes dome, you know. Uh, yeah. but nowadays we just have too many ways to kill things. We have uh, Prismatic Ending, we have Marches of Otherworldly Light, we've got um, Get Lost, we have, uh, what's the one from Midnight Hunt? The one that gives them a clue, whatever that one is. Uh, Fateful Absence. Fateful Absence. Like, we have so many ways to kill things that we didn't used to have. Um, also, I think we have another red spell that does four to something. Is a del- this mind, uh, not Mind Collapse, but... Uh, Are you talking about Flame Slash? No, not Flame Slash, it's the Delve one with, with uh, Instant Speed. Uh, that one does five. Like we have a lot of sinkhole. That maybe? yeah, that, yeah. I think that's it. Like we have a lot of stuff that we didn't used to have, so it's less playable. It, no, it's actually not playable. This one's definitely not playable anymore. Um, that being said, I love it. I have an original foil still, and I never plan to get rid of it. So yeah. Actually, hold on. I think we're two for two on cards I have uh, OG foils of, or like older foils of. And um, I also have the next one on my list I have an old foil of. The next one on my list I do not have an old foil of, but the next one on my list is Tamio Field Researcher. Yo! Uh, this card used to be, like, great. I, I I played it in pod for a little bit. Uh, like, Bant midrange, Bant, like, uh, like, equipment. The card was great. Now, like, I could see it still being all right. But it just, again, it doesn't do enough. In the world of Minskin Boo, like, if you're four mana <laughs> Planeswalker, the best case scenario is it comes in and it draws you two cards. You're just doing something wrong. Uh, my next card is Loxodon Smiter. To be honest, I feel like this used to just be good back in that grindy meta you were talking about. Jund was all the rage. People were liliana you all the time. And it just, like, came into play, was not going to get countered, and it was going to smack him. Yeah, I'm surprised that you uh, you support Loxodon Smiter, seeing as when that was good, you played even more control than you do currently. Yeah, but the thing is, it ha- like it's the same thing. reason I don't really care about, um, uh, what's the uh, the Rhino that's pro-blue and comes can't be countered and has, like, hate, you can pay to give it haste and trample and stuff? Uh, Shifting it's Ceratops. Not a, it's not, yeah, not a Rhino, but... Oh, I meant to say Dino. Um, it like same reason I don't care about that. People are always like, "Oh, dude, you're gonna hate this shifting ceratops," and I'm like, "Why? I have removal for the creatures. The counter spells are for the burn and the planeswalkers." You you were on so many more counters though when Loxodon Smiter was good. That's true. Like you that's were true. So counter heavy. I'll I'll give you that, but I just don't like. I don't know. I I, I was just gonna kill it anyways. Like if you're gonna curve into that, I'm gonna cast Wrath of God. Like. What is gonna, you know? Sure. Or I'm just gonna die before I can, but you know. Um. Uh, yeah. The, those were the good old days. Either way, <laughs> uh, my next one uh, is kind of cheating. Uh, I I said all of Bant ETB because that's just a deck that I really miss. And, and like, don't get me wrong, it could probably still be fine, but the way that the deck used to play, at least, is like you would just accumulate all this stuff to kind of set up, like, a value engine. Like, Venser, and, like, just kind of, like, churning a value engine. And to clarify, now, he's would... talking about pre-2022. Yeah, like, like old Bant ETB. Now, like, if you were to play it, it would kind of just have to be more of, like, a toolboxy hate piece type deck that also just like has a lot of etb stuff and ways to like recur those really my imagination is you're just you're just taking every single initiative creature and hard focus and flickering them i mean that too so yeah that's i guess that's where i'm at um well my next card i i also have a deck that i miss actually i'll do that now just while we're talking about decks that we miss um, no one is going to feel any sympathy for me, and this deck was only kind of real, but it is in fact Lantern Control. 
I, to be honest, I don't even know that I want to play Lantern Control again because when I played it, it wasn't that the deck was bad. <laughs> it wasn't that the deck was bad. It's that the deck, as you can imagine, took too long to win, so you just kept drawing. I think it was it was also pretty bad, but it was mid at the, at, when, at the it, when it when it. When the deck did poorly, it lost very quickly. But when it did well, it didn't necessarily win. It just kept them from winning until everyone was tired of playing Magic. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but really what I want is like a artifact toolboxy kind of control prison kind of deck that actually combo kills. What exactly that looks like, I'm not sure. Actually, it probably kind of looks like that Tesserator deck that I built. I built, like, uh, when Kamigawa came out, the Neon Dynasty came out, I built, like, a Sultai Tesserator thing with the new Tamiyo and some other stuff. That deck was dope. We should revisit that, actually. That sounds dope. Okay, hold on. We can't do this right now. You, you have yep. another good card? Uh, yeah, uh, my next card. I, I recently discovered that I don't think this card is good enough, and it was a large realization to me is Woodland Bellower. The card used Whoa. to just be like an absolute mainstay staple in pod. And last time I was building pod, I was like, I just, I can't find room for it. Like, six mana, it's like big and dumb and does things, but I, I couldn't justify f making a slot for it. And I, I got really sad because I used to love, used to love Woodland Bellower. That card used to be the bee's knees. And I mean, maybe other people are still playing it. I haven't really seen other pod lists recently. There's a reason um, for that. Sure, but it, it's it's such a good friend, and it it lived a good life. <laughs> okay, uh, my next card is Sphinx's Revelation. Um, I'm pretty sure we've argued about this on the on the podcast ad nauseum. Um, <laughs> I. Do not truly think Sphinx's Revelation is still good or playable. I just love it so much and want to keep playing it. That's really all there is to it. It used to be very good in that grindy meta. It was like a grindy, not that blue meta back in the day, back in the good old days where blue eye control was just great. Um, and I, I loved this card. Nowadays, you just uh, play more ways to recast recall for less mana. And it's just better. But, yep. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's big sad, but that's my friend. I love Sphinx's Revelation. Rest in peace. I'll it's play like you again anyways. It's like expansion explosion if you're not trying to kill them. I'll play you again, and I won't feel bad about it. Off to uh, you. My next card, I, to be honest, I might have mentioned this one in the year-end wrap-up. I'm not sure. This is also a card that just thrived in the grindy metas. It's strictly better, or uh, significantly better than Outpost Siege, uh, Course of Portal. Uh, just drawing an extra card every turn. I remember when, like, when we we at least our, our at least our group we like were in a meta at one point where if your opponent resolved a Course of Portal, that was the, the game. The game was over. You were like, I can't. How am I supposed to come back from this value? I, I can't compete with this. It, okay, oddly and, and, enough, the exception to that was the Rock because they had the most ways to remove it. Yeah, uh, or like. Yeah, there were, there were like, if you had to remove it quick. Like, if they got, like, two turns with it... If it was you, Divination, you lost. lost. Yeah. Like, if it was Divination and then you had to spend a removal spell on it, that's just so much value. How do you, how do you beat that? And now, like, if they're using their turn four to play an artifact that doesn't immediately impact the board, you are like, hot <laughs> sucker! You mean if they cast their, uh, the one ring that takes longer? Yeah, they cast... It doesn't they, protect them? They cast their core of portal, you cast your one ring, and then you just laugh as they lose. Then you're protected from voting. No, uh, I don't, it's not how uh, that works. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, my next card is Xanagos the Reveler. Um, this one I think was one of the cards we might have talked about before, or at least on the podcast before we've talked about how Xenagos the or maybe on the Paperlander, I'm not sure. Either way, I know we've talked about how... It used to be when in pod and other decks you would play interesting cards, such as Xenagos the Reveler, um, but now you just play Minskin Boo and Oko and Teferi in those slots, and it's sad. But 
Xenagos the Reveler used to be the bee's knees. He would ramp you, he would make you dudes, and he would... Actually, that's pretty much all I did, but it was good enough, because your deck needed a lot of mana. Um, I, w- I want a bee's knees counter, because I feel like you've said it like three or four times by this point. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, all of these cards were the bee's knees, but... Uh, Does it count if you say the bee's knees? Uh, no, it doesn't count if I say the bee's knees, it only counts if you say the bee's knees. Okay, well so then I will stop saying the bee's knees unless I want it to be counted. Yeah, we really need to move on from the bee's knees and start talking about cards that we miss, such as metallurgic summonings. It's like a uh, shark typhoon, but way worse. It's like Chromeho Seed Shark, but also worse. I don't know what that card does. It's the three mana shark typhoon, but you gotta pay two for each. Oh thing to turn yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess kind of. It, but metallurgic summonings, it it's a five mana enchantment that turns your instants and sorceries into creatures of their cmc's power and that used to win games well it also has a five man ability that says exile it rebuy your whole graveyard worth of spells yeah to be honest i don't think i ever did that in my history of playing metallurgic summonings i mean the thing is if you have enough things in your graveyard to get with it that it's worth doing then you've already drawn enough cards and made enough dudes you just want to keep making dudes yeah, I was like, you've just you've got a big enough board already. Yeah, it's probably more like a commander ability. Yeah, but the card was fun. Prob- definitely not good enough anymore, though. Okay, here's an interesting one that there could be a day where it actually is relevant again. I just don't see it being anytime soon. Um, it is Throne of the High City. I expect people don't know what this one does. Not everyone, anyways. <laughs> so this is a colorless land. From Conspiracy Take the Crown. It creates colorless mana. It's probably legendary. I don't know. And it says, pay for, tap, sack it, you become the monarch. And this was so important and so good for a while because back when um, Canlander was more in its infancy, at least when our meta was. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe not Canlander, but when yeah. we first started playing it. Yeah, what was going on going on when we began playing the format was uh, the Monarch was, that was the thing to do. That was how you did stuff. It was insane. And as a control deck, it's fine. You can cast Wrath of God, and then you still have your opponent with their uh, zero mana... Um, coercive portal every turn and it is just no bueno so you would play a throne of the high city to take it back you would rarely activate it unless you were in a control mirror um proactively but you would use it to take the monarch back when someone else got it and the reason this is not a thing anymore is because you're already playing a bunch of creatures now because you have to play creatures in control decks to get the initiative after you swipe the board uh, so there's not really any reason to play it anymore because you're never going to activate it proactively. You're never going to activate it after they get the Monarch because you're already playing creatures to get the Monarch back. So it's just not worth the colorless land slot. That and if at any point in the game you are spending like effectively five mana because you have to tap four lands and sacrifice a land just to get the Monarch, like you're in kind of a rough spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I feel like what we've what we've been learning from this cards we miss list is we both just miss the grindy days. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a beauty to. I mean, I still love Canlander, obviously. But I love there, the fast, crazy stuff. But there was there was a a glory in the the grind. I'm not gonna lie. This is a grind fest. You know what? We're gonna have to work on this name. But uh, <laughs> that this this slow deck. Medium to slow deck only tournament is is sounding better and better. All right, maybe we should create an app that like people can upload like uh, grindy Canlander decks, and we can call it like Grinder or something. Oh and, yeah, like we can just like see. A oh, bunch so of, we like, can map. No, yeah, decks. and we can you, you can like look for stuff that you like, and if you like it, and it like works with your playstyle, you can select a match so it, to let it know that it matches your playstyle. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great idea. We should we should uh, do this. All right, <laughs> moving on from this uh, glorious bit, I'm gonna finish off my my list of things that I miss, and I'm I cheated again. I cheat count twice. 
because uh, I picked another deck. And and this, I, I've actually seen this deck somewhat recently, but I, I don't think it's good because the format's too fast. But Super Friends Armageddon, like, Wildfire Yo. dot deck. You just played, like, your game plan was play a bunch, like, turns 1, 2, and 3, or at least 1 and 2, you play Mana Rocks. Turns, like, 3, 4, and 5, you play Planeswalkers. And then after that, you just try to cast, like, a, like, Armageddon, a Ravages of War, a Burning of Zins, uh, whatever, like... Yo, Wildfire, just, though, is the best one. Yeah, you just you just kill it all. And then you're also in, like, a bunch of Wraths and, like, spot removal and stuff to get you through the early game. That deck's entire philosophy is, if they don't have card, my card will win. Yeah. Uh, you just, you had all the value. But now it's too slow, too dirtily. I can't wait till someone just, like, randomly goes XO with that. I would love to see that. That, that would... <laughs> Fill me with joy. All right. We, you were correct, and we do have to start, like, picking up the pace here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my next card, which is uh, Electrolyze. Um, this card has been a love of mine since my modern days, back when modern was, you know, a format worth playing. Um, it, if you don't know it, it's, uh, you should. It's one red, white, nope, one red, blue for an instant. You split two damage amongst any targets, and you draw a card. Um, it's like, the best part of fire and the second worst part of ice all in a little three mana package and it is a card i miss and love and will also probably sleeve up next time i put together blue moon if i can justify it yeah that card used to just blow people out like if you hit two x ones and drew a card three for like that's just so much value yeah yeah agreed well it looks like we're moving on to our next mini episode which is cards that we wish were playable now this is distinct from cards that we miss because cards that we miss used to be played it used to be a thing these cards just never quite were or aren't yet or we don't believe them to be and i hope that we can uh see some of these someday but i, I think as of now they're not going to work out um, i have a bunch you only have two i think i have two so I, I'm, I'm how about i do a couple at a time then sure because I have, like, ten. All right. Um, my first one is Whirlwind of Thought. This card is one red, white, blue for an enchantment that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you draw a card. That's it. I just want to play this in Jeskai Control so bad, but I just know that if I try to get to four mana and don't spend all my spells already, I'm probably already losing. And if I spend four mana on this and then they just cast Cathar Commando, I'm crying. Um, yeah, it, it has the the course of portal problem where you're spending four mana on something that doesn't do anything the moment it comes in. That one, this one actually can if you do it way later. Um, but that's not a, that's not a boon for it. That is, that's bad. No. <laughs> so yeah, I want that card to be a thing, but it's not, and it probably never will be. Um, let's see. Uh, I have Mystic Reflection on here. This card is one on a blue for an instant. You can foretell it and then cast it on a later turn for a single blue mana. And let me get the exact wording on this, actually. But basically what it says is this turn, whenever a creature comes into play, it comes into play as a copy of target creature. That actually may just be the exact wording, to be honest. Yeah, so choose target non-legendary creature. Non-legendary, which is relevant. It says next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers... Enter the battlefield this turn. They enter as copies of the chosen creature. I mean, the dream scenario is they go, you, you you go land. They go land dork. Then you go land, and then they go land Oko, and you respond and say, "Mr. Reflection, target your dork." And their Oko is a three mana Birds of Paradise. That's the that in the other dream scenario is they cast Pestermite, and then they cast Kiki Jiki, and then you respond to the Kiki Jiki by casting this, targeting their Pestermite or something. I guess, or maybe mess up their spell seeker line. Listen, the point is, it, it's probably n okay. You know what? Maybe it is good actually. No. Oh, okay. That's I fair. don't think it's good. Okay. 
I, I've put, I play this in like every blue commander deck I build because it's actually really good in commander because there's always a bad creature to give someone. But it's probably not good here. But I, I think it's such an interesting card. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, Gray Merchant of Asphodel. It's hey, don't be, don't be hate. <laughs> it's five uh, mana. Hold on. It's five mana. You, can never, you, you yeah. absolutely can't claim that he was never good enough. In Canlander? Gary, Gary no. has killed so many people in Canlander when, when like, big black, like, mono black devotion or mono black control was okay. a thing. No, it's not a thing, though. No, it absolutely was. No. I, that was, like, a real deck. I don't think Gary was legit in it. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. Uh, if, you, if, you uh, had, if you had enough right, devotion right. for Gary to do anything, you were winning already. He's win more. You, you're, you're so incredibly wrong. All right, I need people to get in the comments here and, and roast Ash. Or I guess roast <laughs> me if you disagree, but I mean, Get in the Gary comments and roast powerhouse. somebody. I, I, can't, I can't be hearing this blasphemy against my boy. All right, well, you go ahead and give me another card and then we'll get to some more of mine. All right, uh, my first card is Gad. Gaedron Diada, uh, uh, Diada, I, I butchered that name. It, it's a Planeswalker. It's one and Grixis. It comes in at four loyalty, and it does a bunch of really cool things that, like, I was like, oh, it, it like, it's cool, and I tried it multiple times, and it, like, felt fine-ish, but it was never amazing. Uh, and I just, I wanted it to be better because the card's really cool, but it's just not there. Yeah, I think the biggest thing about it was that it like it quote unquote protects itself by not being good enough to do anything. Well, no, it protects itself by just making it so that they have to attack you instead of it. But it when people say planeswalkers need to protect themselves, that's important, but protecting yourself is also relatively important. Yeah. All right. Well, um I've got uh I've got a couple more here. Um, now we enter my Midnight Hunt subcategory. Um, number one is Delver of Secrets. This card was printed in Midnight Hunt and was never printed before it ever. And it just, uh, w since it was printed in Midnight Hunt, it's not been good in Camlander. Big sad. Um, anyway, that actually goes with the cards we missed because Delver of Secrets is not good. Real card, though. Uh... Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. Dope card. He's a five-mana legend. That's his first problem. So, uh, spells can't be countered by anyone. That's his second problem, because then you can't counter their spells. And he says, each incident sorcery card in your graveyard is flashback. And it costs equal to its mana cost. Five mana legend, that's bad. Your counter spells stop working, that's bad. Well, those are the only bad parts, but that's bad enough, unfortunately. But I think it's such a cool card. Maybe I should build the air in Commander. We don't play Commander here, we're Canlander players. Right, my bad. Next is Vanquish the Horde. Um, it's White Blasphemous Act. And I just feel like if it's getting cheaper than Wrath of God, it's probably not looking good for you. And if it's not cheaper than Wrath of God, you should you, just be playing, Wrath, should be of playing Wrath of God. <laughs> so, that being said, I feel like I've been noticing a lot of decks recently be like spitting out a bunch of goblin tokens. Like they're on the three Rabble Masters, they're on like other small stuff that kind of gets like works together. See, certain, I feel like you, you, I don't know. your problem is you don't want to rely on that for your cards to be good. Like, Wrath of yeah, God is also just amazing in those situations. Yeah. I, I'm but, just not I'm not really sure where it would come up, so I just think it's, like, not going to be good enough most of the time. But it's like, you look at it with those, like, those dreamy, like, oh, what if I get a two-mana Wrath, though? Sure. I'm not saying that's legit. I'm just See, saying, like, that's, 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 that's what that's makes me wish it was playable. Fills. Yeah, that's true. That is the rule that Terminus fills. Okay, next we have Sunset Revelry. This is a this is basically a different time of reinforcements. It's one and a white for a sorcery. It says if an opponent has more life than you, you gain four life. If an opponent controls more creatures than you, you get two one ones, human creatures, tokens. And then if an opponent has more cards than you, you draw a card. So it's like fine. It's like it's similar to um, timely reinforcements, but you gain less. You get fewer, but it has the upside of maybe drawing you a card, and it is only two mana. So I feel like I, in a red like, is that that card's only two mana. Yeah, in so a really it was three. In a really because time the reinforcements is three. Oh right. This one uh, on this whole list, I think actually has potential. Like I bought a foil for blue white just in case. 
I mean, I know you used to play Timely Reinforcements. I don't think Timely was good is the thing. Uh, all I know is that you used to play it. Fair. And, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, your old blue-white lists were definitely uh, no creatures. Like, you played zero creatures, yeah. or at least almost. Well, I mean, so. we've argued about that a million times. Yeah, I finally came yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. To be fair, the format shifted in a way that you kind of had to, unfortunately. Unfortunate. Anyways, uh, let's see. You have one more card, right? Yeah. Okay, you go ahead, and then I have three more. All right, so my my last card is actually a newer, a, a pretty new card. It's Archdruid's Charm, uh, and maybe there are people playing this somewhere. There are. But it's... Really? Yeah. Uh, see, I guess for me specifically, I want this to be good enough in, like, creature combo decks, but... It, the triple green is just so it, it's so hard like uh, i i tried it and it's i it just didn't feel it it, it felt too clunky it did make it to the top two in 2023 victoria year end all right so maybe i'm totally wrong uh maybe um, I, I also try it again i also got got by it oh actually that was a commander game so that doesn't count well we've talked yeah, a lot about commander matter. We've been playing more command. I've been playing more. I, I was going to say specifically, you have been talking a lot about commander. I don't play that <laughs> filthy format. All right, all right. Uh, anyways, um, let's see. Uh, Deep root wayfinder. I think this card is garbage. I think it looks cool, but it's kind of garbage. So this is the one. It's the two drop. Whenever you attack with, or sorry, whenever you do you deal damage with it, so it has to hit, uh, or it can hit a battle and it still works. You surveil one, then you can return a land from your graveyard to play a tapped. It's a two mana, two, three. I think it's only good if you get to mox it out with the fetch land and then get like an almost guaranteed hit or take a free creature that they play. That's like... See, even then it probably just eats a lightning bolt. Right. Like, I just... I don't know. I just think it's not there. I think it's really cool and really interesting, but I just think it ain't it. Yeah, I agree. I think that card's really bad. Okay. This next one... I think is one of, like it falls to the typical thing where Kane Lander just doesn't have the density to make it good. Um, that being said, I would love to be proven wrong. If you have a deck list that is evidence to the contrary, hit up your boy. All right, I want to see it. This is All Will Be One. Nicholas, are you familiar with the card All Will Be One? Uh, sort of. And by sort of, I mean I know I've heard the name. It's a big. Well, it's also the name of the set. So it is a big fat red enchantment. That says, whenever you put counters on something, deal that much damage to something. Oh, yeah. Uh, that card's bad. Yeah, but how cool is it, though? Uh, how does this interact with playing Dark Depths? Yes, I think. that That's a, a thing. I mean, I, I, that would make sense. I guess it depends on the wording on Dark Depths. I've never read it that close, I suppose. Oh, yeah. This first ruling specifically says it works. Well, not Great. specifically, but it says a permanent you control entering the battlefield with counters. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you can play this and then Dark Depths and do 10. I mean, don't get me wrong, the card's really bad, but that would be funny. Yeah. I, it's only 5 mana. Oh, oh yeah. Only, only 5. Only 5 mana. mana. <laughs> alright, alright. And then your last card today from Cards Ash Wishes Were Playable is um, the opposite of Phyrexian Obliterator. It is Phyrexian Vindicator. It's white, 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 white for a 5-5 five, five with flying. If damage would be dealt to it, prevent the damage, and it deals that much damage to any other target. So it redirects any damage dealt to it. I think the only reason we don't see this card played, to be honest, is because all of the decks that want to play a 4-drop white creature want to do it with Ancient 2 mana. That's pretty much it. Like, they don't want to spend white, 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 white. Yeah. Um, but I think the card is so cool. I like it as a flavor card. The art's nice, and I want to see it played, but I don't think it's going to happen. So it's hard out there for magic cards these days. The uh, the bar is pretty high. <laughs> yeah, the bar is pretty high. Um, all right, we good to move on to the last uh, last little category here? I think we are. Sweet. Uh, this one is, is simply decks we want to play. Um, just like decks that we haven't played or haven't played in a while that we want to try to put effort into playing so i guess ash you want to start it off yeah so the first deck that i have here is red green monsters and 
This is notably distinct from Red Green Bond we keep featuring, though that deck is very close to Red Green Monsters in my opinion. I think it's like 15 cards different. Maybe more. I would love to hear your opinion, C Bond, in the comments. But like, I do want to play like a classic, like, not classic I guess, it's like pretty popular now, is the just like, I'm going to be playing Soul Ring, Mox Mox is my points, I'm going to play a 3 drop on turn 2 or faster. And you're going to have to keep dealing with them. Yeah. So that style deck. Yeah, the those kinds of decks are lots of fun. Uh, the first deck on my list is Eggs. Uh, I have actually played Eggs before, but uh, I've never played it long enough to like get good with it. Like there, so there's playing a deck, and then there's becoming one with a deck. And a deck all like will be Eggs. One. What? All will be one. Oh right. Yep. The card. Yep. Good reference. Callback funny we did I got it. it got it immediately yep first try uh no, th there's a difference between playing a deck and like flowing with the deck and i feel like eggs is a deck that really rewards you for like getting into the eggs spirit and uh just like letting uh letting the combos fill your mind yeah so i want to play eggs more i suppose you want to get eggy Get eggy. Yep. Next deck I want to play with. I, I have played this deck before, but I've mostly played the Thoracle versions of it, which is Esper. Actually, maybe exclusively. Esper Midrange. I think every Esper Midrange deck I've played has been a Thoracle build, and I just don't want to do that, you know? I want to build, like, Recall and or smaller blue points type of Thoracle or type of Midrange. No, not Thoracle. Not Thoracle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with, like, DT in the points instead, something like that. Just, like, a more blue mid-range as opposed to a hard control. I want to play, like, Esper Charm. I want to play, like, Monastery Mentor. And I want to play... Probably, I don't think Jay's Fringe Prodigy makes it into decks anymore, but maybe that kind of stuff. Um, I want to play Thought Seize in the Holy Trinity, and probably more than the Holy Trinity. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the next card, the next uh, deck on my list. It, I, I've technically this is kind of cheating a little bit because I have played this recently, but I, w I want to. Uh, I've already said that I wanted to do this and I haven't done it, so it is on my list of things to do. Is I want to play medium blue enough to like actually get a tuned list. Like, don't get me wrong, it's never gonna be S tier or even really A tier. But I think I think with a tune list I could get it to a a, a B tier, maybe. Sure. That might be ambitious. But the deck felt actually pretty decent when I was playing it. So I want to make it. I want to tune it. All right. My uh my next one is Seeker Walk. Um, and I don't mean like the toolboxy kind of Seeker Walk. I mean like the Turbo Seeker Walk, the kind that feels more like you're playing Flash Hulk, that kind of Seeker Walk. Um, because I haven't played that. And I'm kind of interested in how it works. Um, like, I know how it works, but, <laughs> you know, like, the more all-in on the combo, not playing toolbox, not playing other creature stuff, just, like, I'm going to build this combo, and I'm going to kill you with it. Sure. Yeah, the the last one on my list, similar to Ash's first deck, is Naya Monsters. I've seen a lot of people talking about it, especially, uh, I think it's Rubber Duck Sauce on Discord has... Uh, kind of is kind of known for for playing that deck. The deck's great. I mean, I like I've played like Naya mid range decks that play pretty similar to to w at least what I've seen like lists and stuff for Naya monsters. But I want to just like go all in on the Naya monsters. Are you talking like spirit guides? No, 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 no. Like mm. playing good cards. What an embarrassment. Well, I have two more decks. Um, one of them is pretty similar to the last one, which is just another all-in combo deck full of tutors and cantrips and a little bit of protection, which is Doomsday. I do think most Doomsday decks are Thoracle decks nowadays, so I guess that would be what it is. That's another deck that I think really rewards you for really learning how to play it. I don't know if I would play it enough to do that, to be honest, because if I'm going to do decks like that, I'd rather be taking a lot of game actions. So I'd rather be doing like pod decks or more likely artifact combo decks, but I can see myself doing it nonetheless. I'm actually going to interrupt you and, and do another deck uh, because you just reminded me. I think I've actually said on the podcast that I want to play this, but uh, there is a, a a deck that someone wrote a very well-written article uh, about it. It's Underworld Breach Storm Doomsday. So it's like the two decks put together. 
and it they really kind of balance out each other's weaknesses and i played against it once the deck seemed great and i really want to build it so all right i have one more deck I'm but i'm actually just going to add point. that deck to my list because that also i i remember that i also was you told me about that and i thought it was interesting i don't know if i said i wanted to play it then but i think it'd be worth giving a shot now anyways the last deck i definitely want to give a shot sometime is five color thoracal lands uh, this is that crazy deck I was talking about that I'm pretty sure made top two in the year end. Um, that was playing Arc Druid's Charm. Uh, deck just looks so crazy. It's so full of weird, interesting cards. You do cool, interesting things. I just really want to give it a shot. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our episode for today. Um, I don't know if you have. I know we've both been a bit busy recently, so I think most of our recent gameplay has been on camera. If you have a story, I have uh, one. Well, but yeah, I mean, I've been recently. I've been actually making more weeklies recently, uh, and I've been playing Secret Walk Kiki Pod with to great success. I think I I think I actually did have some some really good matches. I just got to pull up. I wrote wrote them down somewhere. So I guess if you have something, you should go ahead while I'm. Pulling yeah, this up. mine's pretty short. Um, I, I recently uh, I've been playing a lot of Paradox. Um, I think it's about time to tear it apart now. But I've been playing a lot of it recently. Um, and at a week recent weekly, I I had a beautiful match where I got to channel out Ugin on like turn three or four, and then in a different game in that match, I got to play three Mana Rocks after a Mulligan. And get down to one card card in hand by casting balance, um, removing I think three creatures, four cards in hand, and I went down a land. I think was what it was, and then proceed to proceeded to win shortly after that. And then another match that day, I got to uh, I think on turn two or three, I had a Merfolk. What's the Merfolk? That the whole breacher, whole breacher, <laughs> and wheel, and then do it again so we did big paradox things big fast and then i think i also played against you and did stuff but that was a different day so maybe you talk about that i will not be talking about that one me and ash did play we actually drew it was a good match it was a good match we, we both did our things but i am i am actually going to talk about playing against paradox but it was not ash it was uh it was someone else and in game one it was like pretty close back and forth. He was doing things, I was doing things. And he had like one big turn where like he was like trying to go off. He wheeled twice in the same turn and all that he was able to do was make infinite creatures. Uh, by making infinite mana and, and doing and being able to untap and tap uh what is it? It's the one that like makes servos and thopters and then like four fours or whatever. Oh, the uh, um, is it like? Oh, I could have told you. I don't know. Uh, it it makes basically he had infinite creatures. Retrofitter foundry. Retrofitter foundry. He had infinite creatures and a way to continue making infinite creatures. Uh, and so on my turn, I I had a line to like make infinite creatures, like do the Kiki combo. But that wasn't good enough because I had to disrupt him first. Uh, but thankfully, for the turn, I drew. I think it was Leyline Binding, to be able to disrupt his loop so that he couldn't continue making creatures. And then I was able to make more creatures than he had made, and uh, and kill him dead. And then game two, all I have written down is. Uh, I won off of Avon Mind Sensor. So, Avon Mind Sensor, still still good all these years later. I actually had a lot of really close matches that day. I, I won't talk about any more of them for the sake of time, but I've I've been have I've been really liking Kiki Pod. Obviously I've always loved Kiki Pod, but I would say so. I've been like really grinding it more recently and uh, the deck's just so much fun. Uh, I believe you can point to a recent video we put out uh, announcing a tournament, which you should all go play in, that is, uh, contains some gameplay of this Kiki Pod. 
It does, uh, which actually, I guess, is a good segue. Uh, well, uh, yeah, for, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Joe If you're watching is, this when it comes out. Joe King is hosting a competitive webcam Canlander tournament with a plateau as the top prize. And we are very excited to be participating in it. So if you if 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 you are watching this before that tournament has begun, which I believe June eighth, June eighth, yes, that sounds right. So if you are watching this before June eighth, twenty twenty four, go watch. Yeah, twenty twenty four. I suppose. Sure. If if this video has come out more than a year ago and you are like, oh man, June eighth, yeah, that. Well, but it might have auto played. Yeah. Uh, go watch our, one of our very recent videos. We did a video kind of talking about more of the logistics and specifics of the tournament. And you can also, through that video, get into his Discord where he will have much more information. So you should play in it. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool. And I'm really excited. We'll be there. All right. All right. I think that wraps it up. I think so. You all have a lovely day. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of the 10 Points Podcast, and don't forget to count your points.